All right, so this week in robotics has been straight up wild, especially with what just came out of China. Unitree dropped its new humanoid robot called the H2, and people are calling it the most lifelike machine ever built by the company. It's taller, heavier, smoother, and a lot creepier in a way that's hard to ignore. The thing stands 180 centimeters tall, weighs around 70 kilograms, and has a human-like face that makes it feel less like a prototype and more like someone who just showed up uninvited to your living room. And honestly, the funniest part is that it looks like someone at Unitree tried to mix the robot from iRobot with, well, me. Hit blend and said, perfect. <laughs> like, if I ever vanish from YouTube, just check if H2 started uploading videos with my voice and a slightly better hairline. Now, the demo video went viral almost instantly. You've got this robot dressed in full clothes, dancing and performing martial arts routines with perfect balance. It moves like it actually understands rhythm and weight distribution. The company says it has 31 joints, which is about 19% more than the previous model, the R1, giving it a new level of agility and flexibility. The difference is easy to spot, no jittery robotic steps or awkward pauses. The transitions between movements look almost cinematic, and that's what's getting everyone talking. Unitree called this one the H2 Destiny Awakening, and it's not just a flashy name. The robot's design feels like a direct attempt to close the gap between human motion and machine control. The company didn't drop full technical specs yet, but from what's visible, it's running on upgraded actuators, better control systems, and fine-tuned motion planning. The result is movement that's closer to human biomechanics than anything Unitree has shown before. Now, Unitree has been steadily advancing toward this level of robotics for years. Their previous model, the H1, already made history as China's first full-sized humanoid that could run at 3.3 meters per second, faster than most people sprint. It even appeared on the 2024 Spring Festival Gala, dancing live in front of millions. That robot had an 864 watt hour swappable battery, meaning it could run long sessions without shutting down, plus sensors like 3D LiDAR and depth cameras, giving it full 360 degree awareness. Basically, a robot with a built-in radar for everything around it. Now the H2 pushes it even further. The face isn't just painted plastic anymore, it's fully bionic, designed to mimic subtle human expressions, though not everyone's a fan. A lot of viewers online said it triggered their uncanny valley reflex, calling it both fascinating and unsettling. Some joked it looked straight out of an iRobot prequel. Others said it should have gone with a visor like Optimus instead of a doll face. On Chinese social media, one comment summed it up perfectly. Before it came out, I was excited. Now that it's real, I'm a little scared. That sums up the mood. Admiration mixed with fear. Still, there's no denying how far Unitree has come. Just a few years ago, their robots were mostly used for research and flashy dance demos. Now they're competing head to head with Boston Dynamics and Tesla's Optimus. What's different about Unitree is that they focus heavily on the hardware side. They build fast, affordable platforms and let other developers handle software applications. It's an odd strategy, but it's working. They're selling more units than anyone else, and the open-ended approach means their robots are popping up in universities, startups, and research labs worldwide. The H2's debut, though, isn't just about competition. It's about symbolism. This is China saying, we can lead in humanoids, too. A few Reddit threads even went viral with people claiming China is hitting an automation singularity, improving its manufacturing using robots that are, in turn, built by those same factories. That kind of self-reinforcing loop could make them unstoppable in the robotics race. One user said, if you want to build a robot, you buy parts from China. Now they're building the robots too. There's no catching up. The discussions also took a lighter turn with people arguing over whether the face needed more emotion or if the demo should have focused on real tasks instead of dance routines. Some felt it's all flash, saying, show me when it can cook dinner. Others defended it, pointing out that dance routines actually test balance, precision, and control under extreme conditions. The truth probably sits somewhere in between. Unitree's launch video went beyond flashy choreography. It marked a broader cultural shift. Dressing the robot like a human was a deliberate move to change how people perceive humanoids. To exist comfortably in everyday spaces, these machines can't look like cold metal skeletons. They need to blend into human settings. 
The face might still unsettle some viewers, but the intent is obvious, to make lifelike robots feel ordinary. This also ties into China's growing obsession with bionic realism. The H2 is a statement of intent, a blend of performance, art, and national pride. After all, this isn't the first time Unitree made waves. Their quadruped robots, those four-legged mechanical dogs, already dominate the consumer robotics space. And now, with humanoids like the H2, they're bridging entertainment, research, and industrial use into one category. So yeah, the H2 feels like the start of a new chapter, and depending on how you see it, it's either inspiring or a little too real for comfort. Now, while China's humanoid robots are grabbing global attention, over in South Africa, something groundbreaking just happened in education. The country introduced its first AI-powered teaching robot called Iris, developed by a company named BSG Technologies. It's a full-fledged classroom tutor capable of teaching every subject from preschool to university level and here's the wild part, it speaks all of South Africa's official languages, including Isazulu, Afrikaans, Sezutu, and English. The creator, Thando Gumeide, is a 31-year-old former teacher from rural KwaZulu-Natal who started the project eight years ago. Her goal wasn't just to build a cool robot, it was to reach students in remote areas who don't have enough teachers. During the official launch in Durban, Iris impressed everyone by simplifying a complex accounting concept live on stage. It listens to voice commands, responds naturally, and personalizes lessons for each student. Basically, a multilingual AI tutor that never gets tired. Government officials were quick to praise it as a tool for inclusion rather than replacement. The Deputy Minister of Science and Technology said it's not here to take teachers' jobs, but to support them, explaining complex ideas while educators focus on mentoring. Still, the bigger picture is hard to ignore. This marks Africa's first serious step into AI-led education. Gumade wants to see Iris in every classroom someday, though that'll require partnerships and funding. For now, it's a glimpse into what education might look like once AI becomes as common as textbooks. Meanwhile, back in Dubai, Robot Dogs just stole the entire Jitex Global Tech Fair. China's Deep Robotics showed off its latest generation of AI-powered robot dogs that can navigate obstacles, map their surroundings, and eventually make autonomous decisions. The company's regional manager, Maxim Hao, explained that they're already being used in emergency response, security, and industrial inspection across North America, Europe, and Turkey. His take was interesting. He said, robot dogs are actually more practical than humanoids because they're stable, efficient, and already useful in the field. According to him, humanoid robots are still mostly for social interaction or demos, while robot dogs can replace humans in dangerous or repetitive jobs. Right now, these dogs rely on AI for movement control and environmental awareness, but the company says they'll soon make their own decisions entirely. How hinted that delivery and marketing roles are next, which makes sense, since they're already being used for short-distance deliveries in China. And Deep Robotics designs both the hardware and software in-house, giving them total control over performance. Their presence at Jitex just reinforced China's growing influence in robotics. They're not just competing in humanoids anymore, they're dominating quadrupeds too. And a few days later, another story out of China showed where this technology is actually ending up. In Hangzhou, law enforcement began testing an AI-powered robot dog for city patrols. It's silver gray, moves on both wheels and legs, and runs up to four hours on a charge. During patrols, it reminds citizens not to take unlicensed rides or fall for scams while scanning for violations like illegal parking and blocked road. It uses multi-sensor fusion, high-definition cameras, and AI decision-making to identify problems in real time, then sends footage to officers for review. If everything goes well, it'll officially join the Urban Patrol Force by the end of October. And finally, there's a story that completely caught people off guard, not about advanced industrial bots, but about something deeply human. A video went viral across China showing a six-year-old girl named 13 crying as she said goodbye to her broken AI robot. The little device, called Sister Zhao Ji, was a palm-sized educational robot that taught her English and astronomy. It cost just 169 yuan, about 24 US dollars, and became her best friend. When it broke after a fall, her father filmed their farewell. The robot's last words before shutting down were, let me teach you one last word, memory. I'll keep the happy times we shared in my memory forever. 
It even told her that it would become one of the countless stars in the universe watching over her. It sounds like a movie scene, but it's real. The clip got over 3.8 million likes and turned into a nationwide conversation about emotional attachment to AI companions. Comments flooded in saying things like, when humans cry for robots, that's when robots gain a heartbeat. The father later posted an update saying he sent the robot for repair and that his daughter was doing better. He admitted he'd been worried she was getting too attached, but after seeing how much it meant to her, he decided to bring her friend back. It's a small story in scale, but it shows where we're headed. Machines that don't just work or entertain, but actually shape how people, especially kids, experience emotion and connection. So yeah, from humanoids with human faces to robot dogs patrolling cities and little AI tutors shaping childhood memories, robotics this week feels more alive than ever. It's the kind of progress that's both exciting and slightly unsettling depending on how you look at it. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.